Bill Burr's new series is F is for Family, premieres on Netflix coming up Friday. He's uh, on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon tomorrow night on Conan on Wednesday. Look at you. That's right. A media boy. Look at you. Yeah, he's I all didn't, thrown up doing the town. I didn't think we could get you back. You know, we had you when you were hung over. Maybe you didn't realize what you were doing. <laughs> That's the second time you brought that up. That bugged you, didn't it? <laughs> It bugged you. I went out. I had a few. What do you? I went old school. No, I liked it. Oh, all right. Oh no, no, I'm fine. Oh, we right. were probably hung over too. Yeah, you know, I we was. Just didn't I was tell a good. You. I was a good boy last night. Last night I had one beer and an appetizer. That was it. I'm being a professional. But I'm you, all clear eyed. Look at me, Dan. <laughs> Are you funnier when you're sober or like? Some oh, yeah, guys I, know, need I, a little I never. Bit of... I never go on stage with any. The only two two times in my life I've ever gone on stage like legally drunk. One was in Ireland, which just happens. <laughs> You're, that's not legally drunk. Yeah. That's yeah, being in Ireland. Yeah, and then the other time I went to a Yankees game and, you know, I got hammered. And then I was coming back to the city and I thought I was sober. And somebody goes, hey, I got a show. You want to jump on it? I'm like, yeah, I'm sober enough. And I went up there and it just did not go well at all, at all. I was uh, instantly bombing <laughs> and like whatever I was doing, like 15 years at that point, all of that experience went just out the window. So no, I don't do that. But then it's almost like an out-of-body experience. Like you're doing it and then there's another part of you that says, you shouldn't be doing this right now. Oh yeah, but the bombing is always not out-of-body. You always feel that. <laughs> that the getting, getting hammered by the crowd and them just standing there like, no, this is definitely happening to me. I don't feel like this is happening to somebody else. So... Um, but you know, when, which when, I, I don't mind bombing if I'm trying something new, but if I'm bombing because of that, I've only did it twice and I, I it's tremendously, tremendously unprofessional and it's just nuts. I, I won't, you know, I don't care if it's four hours before I'm going on. I never mess with that stuff. But afterwards, you know, you know, how, how game is, on. Sta how has stand up changed? Um, or has it changed? I think comedy crowds are way more educated to comedy as far as like, you know, half the crowd has made a YouTube video at this point, tried to make it funny <laughs> and then got either good reviews or got shredded. And you actually learn what plays like I, I you know, a bunch of people ripped off was the uh, the Dave Chappelle thing where you do the joke and then you show it in slow motion and then more in slow motion. That literally became a style for like these videos. So like people in the crowd, you started seeing regular people from the crowd making videos using the influence of the Chappelle show. So um, like you, you really have to disguise the jokes more. Like you have to, before you let them over here and then bam, you went like that. Now I feel like you got to walk them through like a whole football field and then bring it all the way around or else they're already standing at the finish line, which does not work as a joke. Then, then you become like, Hey, do you see what I did there? And people start going, hi, oh, in the crowd. And you just feel like a <laughs> cornball. That's, that's probably the worst heckle. <laughs> The Ed McMahon, hi -oh. oh! When they do that, it's just like, that means that joke stunk and it would have bombed in 1971. And that's the that's the worst one. I saw a guy open for me at an improv. Oh, boy. And he was just, I hate seeing people bomb. Unless it's a friend of mine, I know they're funny. Then it's hilarious. But um, I saw this newer guy and he was bombing. And it was like three or four in a row. And then he finally did one of those Tonight Show jokes from the early 70s. And it was dead silence. And some guy just goes, hi -yo! And I was just, I, I literally, it like hurt my rib cage. I was like, oh, God, this guy, this guy might not be back. This might be his final set. How are you watching the Patriots games? Like last night. It was kind of a boring game. Yeah, it was a very boring game. Yeah. Uh, well, so I mean, J.J. Watts wasn't, he wasn't healthy. I mean, he had his arm all wrapped up and everything like that. Um how do I watch him? I mean, you know, if I'm on the road, obviously I'll tape the game and then I'll watch it. But uh, I am excited that we lost a couple of games, you know, because when we were undefeated, that was like an albatross around our neck and we got busted for the cheating. So then we were like, all right, this is what we could have been doing. And then we ran up the score and I felt from October on we were playing a playoff game because we started embarrassing people. So uh, being undefeated on the East Coast, I've noticed is way more pressure than doing it in like Indianapolis or like South Carolina. Like, I feel like there should be way more pressure on Carolina right now. Like, are you going to do it? Yeah. Are you going to do what the Patriots couldn't quite do? And blah, 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 blah. But you just sort of, oh, it's, it's Carolina. You know, things are easy down there. It's laid back. He's uh, Bill Burr, actor, comedian. Uh, the new series F is for family. It's Netflix this Friday. He's on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon tomorrow night. And then uh, Conan on Wednesday. Do you know what you're going to do on Fallon and Conan right now? Um, I'd have no idea for Kona, but if for Fallon, I just did a pre-interview. So they sort of like walk you. There's basically the game plan. Isn't that weird? And no. then it goes out the window. Yeah, because I can't do like the, uh, 
I think if you're bombing on those shows, they stay, they stick with the cue card. And then it's like, blah, 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 blah. And you do your little thing. And then it's just, it's just sort of like, so, did you ever uh, mow a lawn and it started raining? And like, as a matter of fact, I have. And it comes off like they have like ESP. And then that's, that's when it's just horrific. And if you look, you can see it in both of their eyes. Like, this isn't going well. This isn't going well. So I try to, uh, it's kind of how I do my stand-up act where I, I sort of walk out. I, some nights I don't know what I'm going to say. Some nights I'm just sick of my act, so I'm just gonna like I'm not gonna I'm gonna try to go as long as I can without doing any of my act, which then makes you present in the room that you're in. So I, I try to use some of those tools when you when you, you do the Tonight Show, but I've never done the Tonight Show, so I'll see. Conan's fun because Conan grew up in Massachusetts, same neck of the woods that I did. You know, he's a little bit older than I am, but we're roughly I feel like we're roughly the same thing. Uh, Jimmy, I've never done his show. But, you know, he's like super positive yes, he is. up guy. Yeah. And I'm more of a curmudgeon. So I, I think maybe we'll have a nice odd couple thing, you know. You, but I love Jimmy. I've known him forever. So I think, I think it's going to be fun. I uh, went on Leno. And, it, and I could tell where, they, you know, they said, you know, you got to stay on script here. You know, you got to stay with what the questions are. And, you know, so he knows how to respond. And then I realized it's, it's not going great. And I went rogue. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I went. And then you saw the light turn back on in his face. Like, oh, here we are. We're doing a show here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we got done, and it was it was greeted with, like, tepid response. It was, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. good to have you on. Okay, yeah. come back. And, yeah. I, and I realized that it's, it's not going well. But yeah. it went well after I went rogue because then I just said, all right, let me go back to something I know that's going to have some fun. Right. And then, you know, the crowd responded because I'm walking out there and they're going, who's this guy? You know, to right. a sportscaster. OK, what are you going to talk about? And then Jay will say, I, 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 you know, like to have a silver ball. Yeah. And then you're going, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> right. And Letterman's just, but Letterman will go off script, too. I know. Where I, I can't even get it back. I never did panel on a show. I, I only did stand up, which was uh, which was always there was an element of terror involved because, because he it, doesn't put his arm around you and say if you stink he's not going to come out and save you like no no good job good job he just comes walking up like bill burr and then would just walk off and he'd be like yeah i deserve that so like you know i've always really respected guys like that uh i hate that doing that I, but i like it that you know that if you actually make them laugh like one of the big thrills was to hear him when he would laugh Letterman? Yeah. And what people didn't realize was he felt like he was that far away. Because the way they shot that show was like the monologue, Paul Schaefer and Letterman was over there. And when I watched it at home, I mean, it felt like it was, you know, like miles, miles apart. Away. But it's like he's like right there. You, you Half a step over, you could shake hands with Paul. So it was a really, really like intimate thing. But the best was when they put the cameras to the back of uh, the crowd. So there wasn't that like that barrier. It used to be like, you know. The T cameras are right there, and then on the other side of them was the crowd, so it was really hard to connect with them. Once they put them in the back, it was it was a really nice gig. Have you ever done white man cliches in sports? Because we do it all the time. Oh, I was doing it on my podcast when I was watching the Celtics game. Uh, I just sometimes, I'll, if I'm just bored, I'll, uh, if I'm the podcast's not going well, I'll just put on some sports and I start commentating. So, like, I, yeah, I do cliches. Don't give it to the white guy. Don't give it to him. Don't give it to him. What'd you do that for? Of course he missed it. And then he fouls him. What else is he going to do? So, I, I, like, I, I definitely do stuff like that and joke around that watching NBA hoop gives you low self-esteem as a white guy. I mean, I can't remember the last time we were on the good side of the poster. We're always that guy. We're always, we're always the uh, Washington general guy. Yeah. Um, You're like Sean Bradley getting, you know, posterized. Or I know, I know, and I think that's why they were jumping all over that kid from the Knicks. I'm sorry, I don't know his name. Porzingis? But yeah, because he had sort of that build, and it just had all the makings of that. So I was really psyched that he's doing as well as he is. But he's European. I know, that's that's like white guy 2.0. Yeah, like that's, that's next not level. fair. Yeah, yeah, that's not fair. We really haven't had a good American <laughs> white guy since Larry Bird. Am I nuts? Like just some guy that people actually... That classic white guy. He can't jump. He's not fast, but for some reason, we can't stop this guy. So it's been a while. Well, he's intelligent. He's he's gritty and he's gutty. Oh, is that what they say? Coach's son, oh, hard yeah. worker, high motor. First guy to the gym, last yes. guy to leave. <laughs> <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> Have you met Bird? No, I haven't. How, I, how would that go? If I met Larry Bird, I th would imagine it would be a... If I said Brady or Bird? Oh, oh, oh Larry Bird. 
Oh, Larry Bird, without a doubt. Larry, Larry Bird is like, you know, he, he was a god. Like, all this generation of athletes, once you get to a certain age and they're younger than you, they just remind you that, yeah, you're never going to make it in the NFL. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, that's it. That guy was born in the 70s. You were born in the 60s. It's officially over. No matter, You can't even be a place kicker. So um, I obviously, you know, love Tom Brady and all those guys. But yeah, Larry, Larry Legend, come on. What about Don Rickles or Larry Bird? Oh, Don Rickles. Really? Hell yeah. Don Rickles hung out with Sinatra. You got Come one on. question to ask Don Rickles. Uh, who killed Kennedy? <laughs> <laughs> you think he knows? Well, yeah. Well, he hung out with Sinatra. I figure <laughs> six degrees of separation. He probably knows. Yeah, why not? Where's well, Jimmy Hoffa? I'd ask him one of those. You know, you know he, you, you yeah. ask him three mob questions. One of them he's got the answer to. You think he's overheard things is what you're saying. I don't know. Chances I, are. I, uh, I don't know. Well, if you talk to some of those old, I'm actually reading a great book right now on like the history of stand-up comedy. Somebody just sent it, sent it to me and uh, about all those supper clubs that the mob ran and yeah. all that type of stuff. It was crazy. And they had some guy that he made the mistake of uh, either his contract ran out or it didn't run out. And he went to a different supper club, club and performed uh, that was run by a different family. And they damn near beat him to death. Like he had to learn how to talk again. Like they cut him like tongue hanging out of his neck and stuff. He's a comedian. Way to bring things down here, Billy. Well, you know, you save that your for Fallon. Question. It's save your... that for Fallon, man. Good that God. still could have been interesting. Bill's... You know what? You've been doing this long enough. The second I brought up killing Kennedy, you should have known the direction I was did. going. I, in. You know, I, I, I'm I blaming tried, you. I tried to stop it there. I went off. I went rogue. I mean, I'm sorry. I went rogue. Assassination humor is awesome. You know, <laughs> gotta love assassination humor. Uh, Bill's new series. Is uh, F is for family. It's uh, Netflix this Friday, and uh, he will show off on the Fallon Show, the Tonight Show tomorrow night, and then Conan on Wednesday. Uh, I'm I am happy for your success. I really am. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I am because Seaton over there is a fanboy. He's the one who brought you to our, you know, you know, you to our attention and uh, been able to follow, and it's been great. Oh, well, you've thank been a you. lot of fun. I I I appreciate it, man. So you're trying to bring it back, feel good. Family. Yeah, it is. Well, hey, I've been a big fan of yours no, for a long see, time. That, you know no, that's I mean? faux. No, no, no. That no, is it isn't. faux no, no. sentiment. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You were part of the, the only ge last generation of sports angers on ESPN that knew the highlight wasn't about them. You did your joke. You got in and you got out. Now you got these guys. They're literally screaming over great plays, and it drives me nuts. I don't watch ESPN that much. It would have been nice if you said that and then I complimented you. <laughs> You want to do it over again? Can no, we do this? This thing's on a no, delay, isn't it? See, you, you know, that's you. That's the dark side of you that you didn't want to say something nice. I get it. But me, I'm sort of the Jimmy about? Fallon. This, is, this, you know, this, this is your inner child and your mother didn't hug you and now you're putting it on me because I didn't give you a compliment yes. at the right thing? Yeah. Somebody's got to go first in the compliment game. So what are you saying? I always have to go first? That's kind of egotistical. It's nice isn't if it? you go first oh, for okay. a change. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll, I said nice things last I, time about you. You could have said that last time you were here when you were hung over. It always comes back to that, doesn't it, Billy? <laughs> I can't tell if you're being passive aggressive or if you're actually being nice here. I don't know. He's, I'm not. I'm not the quickest wit here. He's you know? the sober Bill Burr, and he's the gonna sober be Bill Burr. Can I? I'm like, at some point, can I talk about the cartoon and not the uh, the assassination <laughs> of one of our presidents? When's it air? It airs December uh, 18th. You can watch all. I mean, six are you episodes. a character in the show? Yes, I do the voice of Frank Murphy. It takes place in 1973, back when you could uh, slap your kid around, take a gun to the airport, and smoke in a car. Right? You just let your kids out, tell them to come back when the street lights are on. For some reason, you can't do this with real people. You can't do this in live action. They think it'll 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 influence real kids. But if you animate it, if you animate it. So I feel like I'm insulated from all these psycho bloggers where I can be like, well, look, this is how animated people behaved in the early 70s. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, if you, yeah, I mean, it is an adult series. Yeah, we we do use adult language and all that, but uh, you know, it has it, you know, it has the honeymooners baby or the greatest moment in the end, which was a lot of my childhood where it would be like we, we look like a Norman Rockwell painting and, it's, and it would be like, hey, let's go get a Christmas tree or let, let's get so and so a new bike. So it was this wonderful thing. And then it was all the dysfunction that happened between that and then you riding down the street and shaking off all the screaming and yelling that you heard. So um, like it, that's basically the. Uh, the premise behind it, and then it's also serialized, which was Netflix's uh, brilliant idea. So each each episode leads into the next one. So um, I'm very proud of it. F is for family this That's Friday. Right. 
Laura Dern, Sam Rockwell, Justin Long, Look at David you. Keckner. Look at you. That's right. That's Look right. At Got you. some big names. Heavy hitters. Heavy hitters. Swinging the pipe. Bill Burr doing big boy things. Look at him. Look All at dressed you. up doing the Look town. Look at you. <laughs> we'll take a break here. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Dan. You know what? I love your glasses. Thank you, Bill. See, that was first. Now you're supposed to say something about my jacket. It's from the Hand Solo Collection. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. <laughs>